All right, guys, since our uh, initial testing of the Everest didn't work so well, I'm actually going to try it on a carb that I'm using on my 327. Um, so I'm going to try it out there, and I'm going to try dunking these uh, turn signal housings again in, in the solution and seeing if it works. I'm only going to do it for about 10 hours this time. I think it's possible that after 12 hours, the Evaporos maybe breaks down and has an adverse effect. I don't know if that's a thing, but uh, I guess we'll see here. So um, I have a, a little bucket that I'm going to put it in and let them actually soak within it and uh, see if that's a better option. All right, so here's the bucket we're using. Here's my uh, two-barrel carb from my first motor. It actually had like a 287 intake and everything on it for fuel economy here. I don't know why they did it, but uh, it's pretty nasty as you can see. It's all uh, rusted up. This is probably going to destroy the seals, but I plan on rebuilding it anyways. It's kind of real stiff in spots anyways, so it needs a rebuild. Um, so I figured I would try it. Uh, I'm going to start with dumping the Evaporus on this, getting it in there. I might not have enough, so I might have to go pick some up, but we'll see. Well, mostly covered it. I'll probably go pick up another bottle here at lunch. Um, but here, we'll dunk one or two of these in as well. Get the, the socket out. We'll do one with the. That one was just a socket. We'll keep the. Uh, or we'll put another one with the bulb in there as well. So, got those in there. Got them soaking. And uh, we'll be back in a little bit. So I just got a new uh, new bottle of Evaporus. I poured it in there. Everything is covered. I figured while I'm doing that, I do have some tools, uh, some old snap-on tools that are a little rusted, a little beat up. I'm going to warranty out this wrench anyways because it was bent. Um, but these swivel sockets are corroded and will not move. And I was having trouble warranting them out with snap-on because snap-on is very choosy, I guess, with rust. Uh, so I figured, why not? I'll toss them in there and I'll try and see what happens. So, uh, we're just going to toss them in there, we'll see how they do, and we'll check on them here in about 10 hours. Alright guys, we're about 10 hours later. Uh, I've been shaking this up every couple of hours and um, trying to keep it fresh in that regard. Uh, so I'm going to take it inside, I'm going to dump this out, and see what we have. It says rinse them with water, so I'm going to do that, and then I will come back and show you guys what we have for each each one of them. Alright guys, so I got it dumped out, uh, rinsed them all off. We're going to start pulling things out one by one. I haven't really looked at anything yet, so you'll see them as I see them. Um, first thing I'm kind of noticing is that it did a good job of really cleaning everything up. Uh, I don't know how much it penetrated into those sockets again, but uh, we'll get them all out, we'll take a look at them, and then we'll go from there. So. They all do look like they, you know, the, the chrome is going on this one, but it looks like it cleaned everything up pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that. Same deal here, really. Cleaned it up pretty good. I guess so far what I'm seeing is maybe that this is a, a good first step for restoration of parts. Um, same here. Thought I heard some water or something in there, but I guess not. So all the housings pretty much look the same. They cleaned up pretty good. Uh, you can see they didn't do anything with the pitting chrome, obviously. It's not a miracle fluid. It's just they it cleaned it good. Uh, next, let's take a look at the, the wrench. That's pretty neat. That's pretty clean. Um, did a good job on that. Uh, sockets, the swivel sockets, they look about the same. Still got some rust in there. Didn't penetrate them, I can't move them still. So, But maybe without uh, some of that rust on there, snap on, snap on will work with me. 
So, same deal here. Maybe if you take a hammer to them too, they'll, they'll loosen up after they get some of that, that fluid in there. This one looks nearly brand new. That one actually, that one works again, kinda. It works this way. It doesn't work the other way. Maybe with a little uh, convincing via big hammer, it'll work. Um, and then the last one. That one is also pretty stuck. I can't get it by hand, but we'll try with the uh, with the hammer. See if we can free it up. Uh, then the carb. Carb cleaned up pretty good. Uh, a little bit of brake clean and carb cleaner, and I think we'll be in business with this thing. Um, oh, wow. This was sticky before. I don't know if you guys recall. Um, as was this, this wasn't moving freely. So that's cool. Uh, did pretty good on that. We went through this carb once already, but it sat out in the tank, so I think it needs to be gone through again. But uh, looks like it did a pretty good job cleaning it up. Use some brake clean, get it fully clean, um, take it apart. Use some brake clean or carb cleaner and get it uh, all sorted out. The uh, Get the bowl cleaned up and the float and stuff. So I got parts for that. I'll be doing that soon, showing you guys how to do that. So I'm going to wrap this video up. Uh, I just cleaned everything off by, by hand with the cloth. Um, you can see how it did on this stuff. I think you can see. Um, I really cleaned the carb up. It doesn't do much with dirt. It's for us, so that makes sense. Um, but wiping off that dirt, this carb almost looks brand new. So a little bit of carb cleaner, uh, a little bit of scrubbing, and it should be good to go back on the motor uh, after the rebuild, of course. Uh, headlights or turn signal housings, they cleaned up real nice. They look about as new as they're going to get without a rechroming. Um, I was able to get the bulb out of this one. And I have one other one that I was able to uh, get a bulb into. So I think I'm set in terms of, you know, having them. Um, the other one with the bulb in it, I broke the bulb trying to get it out. So that one's a, kind of a lost cause. But, uh, so, like I said, I got the two that I need, so I'm content there. Reverse light housings, I don't have a reverse light bulb to check out. So, um, they look good though. I guess we'll see. Those don't matter as much to me as the uh, turn signal housings do. Uh, let's see, we got the uh, the wrench. It's still cleaned up pretty good. Uh, what's dark here is from being burned when they when they bent it. So that's that. And then uh, the swivel sockets. These cleaned up very good. Uh, it doesn't. It's not a penetrator of sorts. I don't think so. They're still solid like they're not moving um, so I think I have a little work yet to get them loose or just have to send them in for warranty so overall Evaporust uh, I think it's a pretty good product it didn't work as well as I think I initially thought it would but uh, it still worked pretty well overall so something I would definitely re recommend you guys check out um, a little easier just to throw rusty parts in this tank as opposed to like sandblasting them and then you're not taking material off as well you're just taking off the rust so um, Something I would try out, I think I got a gallon for 15 bucks, so it's kind of expensive, but it's it's worth the try. So I uh, hope the second review kind of helped clear up some uh, confusions from the first review, and I uh, hope you guys got a good idea of how Evaporust works. Um, so I, I want to thank you guys for watching as always, and uh, I will see you guys in the next video.